Hello, everybody, and welcome to Speaking Out of Turn. Today, the two of us will be discussing some bands, a couple of different lists. Um, these will be bands that we think have, their success has been quite puzzling to us. We don't necessarily want to call them overrated, just want to say I can't understand why they were as big as they were. And then we'll also talk about some bands that, in our opinion, should have been much more successful. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the puzzling ones. Uh, all right, so where do you want, you want all the other ones that we don't quite understand? Correct. Now, again, I just want to preference, I, I'm not, I don't want to hear album sales and, and all that garbage. And Justin Bieber sold a ton of albums. That doesn't mean his music doesn't suck. So it's just two fans, lifelong fans, who know there's much better bands out there that did not get the shake that these bands got. All right, you want to start us off with the bottom yeah. of your list? I'll have to condense it because I... There's so many. I had five that I condensed it down to as it was. But uh, if we're going three, number one with the bullets, Guns N' Roses. Don't get it now. Never got it then. Never liked them then. Horrible singer. Uh, the guitar player is a bumbling idiot. I mean, is sloppy, like Ace Freely sloppy. And I just, I don't get it. Their songs are terrible and nine minutes long. <laughs> Never liked him, can't stand him. No one can ever change my mind. I've heard every album. It's nothing. I, I mean, some of their songs off the first album could be good if performed by someone who could sing, maybe. But I just don't get it. That's number one for me. <clears throat> yeah, and I know that your brother was a huge fan of theirs, at least mm -hmm. when they were in their prime. Still is. So, yeah. Um, and I never really cared much for them either, although they didn't make it to my list. Um, because I had a hard time also with some of these in condensing it. Um, but push came to shove. Um, I went for my number one that I just have never understood as Motley Crue. <laughs> They're on my list too. Um, again, I know that they didn't start the scene but when the scene in LA uh, got going for glam or whatever sleaze whatever you want to call it I know that they were very popular like at the whiskey um, um, I just I, I just never got it again their songs are they don't have one album in my opinion that has that's loaded with hits. I mean, even if you take a look at album sales and things like that, I mean, they have one or two in what I would assume in other people's opinions are the good songs, right? I mean, it would be very difficult to put together, in my opinion, any type of a greatest hits. I just, I never got it. I, the lead singer has never been good live. He is, and at this point in his life is absolute trash. When he's up on stage, he looks like the abominable snowman out of the 1970s <laughs> version of, of of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's just, yeah, I just don't get it. I mean, for for Motley, I for the first album through Doctor Feel Good, I could find at least one song that i liked on the album maybe two except for theater pain that's all garbage and i don't care what you want to say about home sweet home it's one of the worst ballads i've ever heard in my life but yeah they'd never have a strong album to where and i know it's not all about just the hits because a lot of these bands that we're going to say should have gotten bigger push people are going to come back and say well they didn't have no hits valid but yeah but that's a shit. Song, i mean I, i'm not saying that those people had push, hits should... but they should have had they got had they either released their debut album before grunge started to take over and or they had the support of their label they should have had hits i mean right. to the point where some of the to... bands put out the same one maybe two songs on later albums thinking hey we 
think that this would have gotten a yeah. ton of airplay had we just gotten the support. And I guess for the big bands that got the support, then the argument should be you should, your album should be loaded with hits like Bon Jovi. Right. You know, I mean, so if you're going to, I mean, Motley Crue is arguably one of the biggest popular bands still to this day from the genre. And it's always the same handful of songs. And the diehards will say, oh, listen to, you know, Live Wire and this and that. Yeah, that's great, but those weren't hits. Right. Not, MTV hits on Headbangers Ball is not a radio hit. So I just, for all the publicity that band gets and all the credit they get, I just don't get it. Definitely they got better music and songs than Guns N' Roses, but equally as puzzling to me of why they just got anointed kings right away for really nothing. Yeah, uh, for I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of people say, well, you have to see them live. Maybe running I around. Did. Yeah, let's well, just it. But for me, when I go to a live show, I don't want to hear the crowd singing. I'm paying to see them perform. And if your lead singer can't hold a tune on stage, then I completely... I'm turned off. I don't want to watch the show. That's, I didn't put poison on my list, but Brett Michaels is another one that's accused of, and rightfully so, of singing every other word because he's too winded or whatever. But yeah, right. I, I just... So we agree on Motley, and that was basically one on my list. So that leaves one on mine. So if you want to give another one, since you've still got two left. Sure. Second on my list, and I, I can't even say that they... That they were big, because I, I don't think they had much in album sales, but they were still popular uh, amongst uh, rock or metal fans, um, but I never got it, because I, I can't think of one decent song, and that's Dokken. Jesus Christ, you just hit my other one. <laughs> it's just, I can't, I, I just don't get it. I mean, they had, the guy's they got a good had, voice, you, but... The, me, he did he had a good voice but the lyrics are bad and lynch is good on the guitar but he's also an arrogant ass i mean i, I wouldn't necessarily hold that against them musical wise but i just don't get it i i've i remember buying like two albums of Dokken after people told me how good they were and i listened to them and it's like when am i going to get to a good song and it, i just never found one they have hits, but that's primarily thanks to Dream Warriors from Nightmare on Elm Street, part four or 17 or whatever part it was for. They've got some that Hair Nation would, that's one of my biggest damn beefs about Hair Nation. You'll hear three Dawkins songs in an hour. And, and that's what brought me to this list because for my job, I'm listening to Hair Nation a lot and over and over and over with Dawkins and Queensryche. And I didn't put Queensryche on this record because I don't think they really got a huge push. It's more of a cult following. But Dawkins did get a huge push. And much like Queensryche, I just don't get it. But especially for Dawkins because they got the bigger push than Queensryche with the same style of music, right? With that operatic right. vibrato. I, I yeah, I'm in full. That's why like I said you just nailed every one on my list except for GNR because Dokken is, is a head scratcher. I mean, they've got several songs that have been videos that doesn't make a no. Um And yeah, even their best of best songs to me are tolerable at best. And uh, I just don't like his voice is like annoying to me, like Iron Maiden. <laughs> then uh, Lynch has a, and I don't know if they. St if they're still together, but I know he had a, a side project um, without Lynch Mob. A no, at, after Lynch Mob, but something that's still kind of current, and I'm going to draw a blank on the name. Maybe TNN. I think. I don't know. Um, and they actually do at least one Dawkins song, and it sounds so much better um, with without Don on it and. So I, I would listen and to Don that. Don has a, has a, he's got a talented voice. It's just not, it's something to me. It just yeah. doesn't sit well with me. I just, it annoys me, but, and I like the higher pitch. You know me, I like the higher pitch. Yeah. You know, melodic voices, but there's something about him and Bruce Dickinson and GF Tate. I'm just like, oh, uh, it just, 
it's like they're trying to cross into some kind of operatic. It, I just don't like it. And the last one on my list, and people are probably going to jump all over this one, but I've never understood it, and that's ACDC. <laughs> I, every song sounds the same, and I think they, for the longest time, I remember when I, like Columbia House, right? Where you pay a mm -hmm. penny, and I think I ordered and different albums from them or cassettes and they none of them were like a greatest hits or a compilation and like the same song was on all of them and it's like i don't and it still wasn't any good i yeah it's and i know they're huge See, i didn't know but oh i agree with you I, the, the reason they weren't on my list is because i didn't know we were touching back to the more classic rock metal yeah because there's there's other ones that i had on here that i'd have thrown right in with acdc that but acdc to not get sidetracked it is it is after you get past bon scott literally with johnson every damn song sounds the same yeah. they're like the they're the zz top of heavy metal and i wanted to put zz 30, top on here too but... special i mean yeah i mean it, it is it's all this and it's not that their music to me is that bad it's just not mind-blowing to right. why they should be that, this mega band if they come on the radio I mean, you, you i'll listen to them it. right i won't sh it's not like doc and right. or motley crew where i'll probably change the station or you know hit fast forward or whatever but um but yeah i just couldn't understand how why they were as big as they were um just they didn't do it for I me so. that block after bon scott same guitar tone same guitar timing, same tempo, same vocal styling. I mean, there's no variation to their music whatsoever. Right. Now, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm going to want to hang myself when I hear it. I just don't get why they have such an allegiance and a huge following because it's really blah to me. And I would have put on there, too, Cheap Trick and Van Halen oh. were my other two that I, that I was bouncing around with, but I figured we were sticking more into the hair right. type and metal. I had a hard time putting ACDC on the list just because because of the timing. I, but I thought, well, they still had some pretty popular albums come out in the 80s and 90s, even though they got started earlier than that. And Van Halen would have been on my list too. Um, but again, I think uh, long career, was Eddie a good guitarist? Yes. Did he do some things on the guitar before anybody else was really doing it absolutely but still doesn't make their music good no no it died. and david lee ross never been able to sing i'm not saying i don't like some david the or some van halen song right God, no, no I, hit, the hits the hits argument is not going to apply here they have tons of hits yeah i just never seen anything special and the reason it came to my mind the same with cheap trick is i had listened to a couple of kiss podcasts and they all just insist that all KISS fans should be Cheap Trick and Van Halen fans. And I say, what? bullshit, neither band is anything like KISS. And Cheap Trick, the the song I, only song I really like is the one nobody even probably cares about, and that's She's Tight. <laughs> that's an, that that's is great. an awesome tune, though. Right? You know, I mean, I want you to want me and all that. I don't give a fuck. It, it does nothing for me. Yeah. And Van Halen was the same way. I remember everybody was a Van Halen fan in the 80s, oh. especially around 1984, Jump and Pam all that on. shit. I'm like, what? What are you, what is so great about this? I don't get it. Yeah. But I left them off. But anyway, now we've covered a bit. <laughs> covered a lot more than we had anticipated. But yeah. no, it, it's a it's a good conversation. Um, and, and yeah, I just, and again, I don't think either one of us is saying these are not talented bands. Oh. They are not, you know. Right. Legitimate, but we're just, at least in my mind, I'm just trying to say there's nothing about these bands that should put them head and shoulders above anybody else. Right. Yet they are. No, I, I totally agree. And okay. I had actually a okay. lot harder time or more difficult time with the next set, where as you said that you had like 10 on the first list. I have 10 on the second. Because I had a hard time. No, this is the ones who should have this been. This is the ones you thought. Yeah, that. Not they did. Did they have middle ground success, or were these the ones that me and you basically found on a whim because we were desperately seeking out music in a music store? Well, I think at least the the one at the top of my list 
had some middle ground. Um, others, but not, but not definitely but not. Be, uh, we'll just see where it yeah. goes because I got middle ground ones too, and I'm not sure how it's going to fly either. So we'll see where you're thinking. Um, and looking at the list, I mean, I would starting at three, working the way up. I kind of had a tie here, TNT. Um, so for me, I mean, TNT, I think, um, was very, very good. Now, a lot of, you know, they were, uh, more of a Norwegian band, although their lead singer was, um, American from the, from the States. I say they probably had a lot more success overseas. Definitely. We weren't aware Definitely of. bigger, yeah. like in, in Europe and they have a huge following in Japan, but, um, again, not. Not so much in the in the states, um, but Tony Harnell, um, I think he's an a, an amazing vocalist. Um, still is still yeah. I've seen your your videos from when you saw him in the summer um, or this or fall. But um, and then Tide. I mean, like I said, I kind of had these three and four. The other one is Fastway. Wow. Yeah, I. Never even thought about. I don't even think about them unless I'm thinking of the movie Trick or right. Treat. They had that whole album or the whole soundtrack, um, but you know they had stuff both before and after. Um, and again, I th I enjoy them. I mean, I have quite a few of their songs saved at, or as favorites in my Spotify, and uh, all of that list is very long. When they come on, it's like I, you know. I don't dance, but um, but well, but it, it moves. Definitely, right? It definitely yeah. it definitely fits in that arena rock. I mean, it's I mean, it's big. The sound is big. The voice is big. Yeah, I don't. I guess I've never listened to anything other than that soundtrack. So, and I love the soundtrack for that movie. So I couldn't agree more from what I've heard. Anyway, they really good music. All right, who you got <laughs> at the? I see you did. You did what? Fastway and TNT. I'm gonna have one that some people are probably not even gonna know who that I'm talking about, and that's Bad uh, Rouge. <laughs> I remember when we their, got that first cassette. Yeah, yeah. Their their first two albums, especially, which is Shake Your Soul and Lights Out on the Playground, but even their self titled third one, where they kind of changed the sound a little bit, went a little bit more. I don't want to say alternative, but not as metal. I just love Kelly Keeling's voice. Their music grooves. I mean, it's if I'm not a dancer, but if you're a dancer, you could dance to it. You could headbang to it. You could sing along to it. It's got melody, harmony. Vastly underrated to me. And the only reason I ever knew who they were is because they had, I saw a video on a Metal Mania VHS tape called uh, Price of Love. And that was out their right. second album. So then I had to search them out. And find the first album, and I just yeah. I think one of we my were in albums. Aberdeen, South Dakota, and we found a cassette of theirs at a pawn shop, and then yeah. listened to it yeah. the whole way home. <laughs> so yeah, they, they were um, they were amazing. Uh, and I don't know how it turned out, um, but I know that Kelly Keeling was in legal, legal trouble, trouble. Um, this last year. Um, so, I'm, so I, I don't know the specifics, but it was something about a dead right. body and. Some friends, they all left his body, sit there. Yeah, I don't know the don't, details. All I, I know is that into it. <laughs> he was wanted for questioning, so I have no idea what happened with that. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah definitely. Be. And honestly, they should be on my list, even in the top 10, and I didn't even think of putting them there. But no, that's a good one. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I've had a hard time, and I, I'm, but I had to put Taiketo at two. Ooh. Um, but on the strength of their self-titled debut album that that's probably why i left it off because beyond that beyond they had good stuff but would it right would it have carried them had their debut come out before i think it was 91 because i think their self-titled debut came out in either 90 or 91 had it come out earlier I think they would have had much more success than they did, and that may have then changed the writing for subsequent albums. But and like I said, that's the reason why I had a hard time with this I, list because they didn't. 
like I said, they didn't have much beyond. They had a lot of work beyond it, and they're still going. Um, however, they only had that one really good album, but that that one album should have had like five hits on it. Like, I, and not just the ballad. If that comes out, no. If that comes out five years earlier, that is bigger than right. Slippery. Oh, I totally agree. I can't. I can't find a song on that Taikato debut debut album. That no, I me either. Skip on. I mean, that, Danny Vaughn is that good. The songwriting was that good. It's just the second album, and of course, like you had mentioned earlier, they put a, their standard right. alone um, yep. and remixed it a little bit, saying, "Okay, is right. it a hit now?" <laughs> but but the rest of the album was like, "Okay, but where's the rest of it? Where's the first album?" And I remember years back, um, at work, you know, the employees were able to listen to music while they worked, right? And so I. At that time, it was still, you know, burning CDs, um, taking them to work. Yeah. And I just remember another coworker of mine who was definitely into music, but not necessarily the same stuff. He was, I don't know, 10 years younger and into much harder things than I'd listened to it. But he was bored with what he had, and he asked if he could listen to some of the things I had. And he grabbed a Taiketo CD um, just because, I mean... It, um, he had never heard of them. I didn't get it back. I mean, it, and it wasn't even the type of music that he generally liked, but I did not get that CD back because he absolutely loved the whole thing. So, I mean, it just, I think it kind of, I don't want to say transcends, but obviously I, I think it, I mean, again, it was that good. Well, it kind of does. It really wasn't hair metal. Right. It was more like a, like a, a harder journey type music. I mean, so where it, that could have easily got radio play on any yeah, radio station. It definitely doesn't fall like into sleaze or glam or anything like that. But it, no. But yeah, like I said, that for me that was two. But again, tough for me to say that where there's other bands who may have had more stuff. Um, you know, other bands that came to mind that have that one really strong album, Wild Side, um, Hardline. Um, yeah, see, there's a lot of them if you want to go that. I mean, if we we're going to do just Based on one album, they should have been huge to oh. me. X Y Z, War oh Babies, yeah, McQueen. McQueen Street. I mean, if you're gonna base it on a debut album, all of these debut albums Y-Z. were better than say Slaughters or or Motley Crue's Live Wire. I mean, these the albums that I'm into, debut albums of these bands that we just listed, head and shoulders above mm. Rat's first album. <laughs> Suck. I, I'm a huge, and Rat I'm fan. not. I am a huge yeah. Rat fan, but that first album is garbage i mean i could say and piss a lot of people off saying kiss's first three albums are fucking complete bore fests it didn't get good till they got more melodic at destroy so that's all we're saying here is some of these i mean we get our list could be endless of people we think should have been big but we're trying to do this more on someone who has a a bigger catalog yeah library library. catalog yeah catalog So the other one on there, I'm surprised you haven't said it for me, is That's Lillian Axe. the top of my list. Okay, because if, if you go... Now, I'm not where you are. I don't like their... Sorry. Just step uh, on the dog? I think the neighbor's kids are coming home and oh. that sets off the chihuahua. Sorry. Uh I'm not into their newer stuff. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't care for the singer, but whatever. That's not the point. The first album through, like, Psycho Schizophrenia. To me, those albums are unbelievable. Ron Taylor's voice is untouchable for that time period. Blaze's guitar playing, I just, they had so much melody. Their ballads are like on Poetic oh. Justice, Jesus, See You Someday. And my God, right. how that band wasn't a mega band, I will never know. It had to be all timing and shit. Definitely a record, record label. label. Um, just from again, I I'm still a huge fan of theirs, um, and although I can't say that I'm friends with with uh, Stevie Blaze, um, but I do he does a lot of um, like Facebook lives and things of that nature, so I I keep up with what's going on with them and and they talk about that, right? And although I wasn't. I mean, Love and War is what definitely got me hooked on them. I, I heard My that favorite. album before I even heard their debut. Um, and their first album was good, but not great. Um, but be, after that, Love and War, 
um, and then poetic justice poetic and justice. psychoschizophrenia. I mean, and see, they they to me are a lot like Kiss and Extreme, and I would Extreme would have been on my mid level success list because they yeah. were big, right. just not mega, but. To where we were talking about ACDC, everything sounds the same. 38 specials, easy top. You know who it is as soon as it starts. Fans love that. When watching KISS podcast, it's so divided between 70s KISS, 80s KISS, do you like the elder, do you hate the elder, were they sellouts, were they chasing people's fads, and maybe so. But to me, I like a band, like Extreme, like Lillian Axe, like KISS, where if I'm not in the mood for heavy shit, no problem. They got a ballad esque right. type thing. You want some melody stuff? They got that. They got to change ups right. to everything. Extreme did it with three sides. Uh, psych, uh, psycho schizophrenia. If you want some real mm. out there stuff, I mean, Lily Axe and Kiss, of course, the Elder on Mass Dynasty. They give you different sounds instead of the same. Right, old, and same I think old. part of that is again that as a musical artist, right there, styles kind of change. Right, I mean that. They evolve as as a songwriter, um, and uh, things change. And like, I remember the f first time I listened to Three Sides from Extreme. I mean, I was working at Conlon's Furniture, and on my break went down to that little record shop on Third Street, South Third. I can't even think of the name of it right now. Budget. Budget. No, not budget. Record. Oh, South, budget. No, mu music, music syndicate. syndicate. Picked up the cassette. Yep. Sat in my Pontiac on my lunch break, listened to as much as I could, and it was like outside of the the like the first single that had already been rest on the rest air. In peace. Like the rest of it sucked. Rest I mean, I peace. didn't like it. Oh, I see, and it. I didn't. But the more I listened to it, the more I appreciated it, and it's like not now I get it right. And and to me, I think at this point, Three Sides is probably my favorite album of theirs to this day. Um. See it, but I, I like that kind of lay back and chill aspect with the heavy edge. That's why I love the album. Absolutely. I'm like one of the few people in the world. I fucking think that's one of Kiss's best albums. Probably top three. Because I don't necessarily need it to be head right. all the fucking time. I, I, I like some melody, some harmonies, and some nice, peaceful music. I mean, I just, that's three sides. That almost will exhaust you if you listen to it from point A to point B. Because you don't even realize it, but you're like, right. moods and emotions are going up and down. By the time it's over, you're like, fuck, what did I just do? Uh, <laughs> I like love I said, that. It's album. probably my favorite of theirs. Um, and the one after that, again, it started going downhill. Um, and then, but yeah, definitely their first three were tremendous. And like you said, they had some, some success, but would they have had it if not for more than words? I remember when we no, met them. Weren't. Right, and they were just impressed that we had the first CD with us, and that we weren't there to, because of more than words. Yep. So, um, well, they, they they had MTV success with the video yeah. for Mother, and Kid Eagle was a video, but it wasn't as played as Mother. But no, then, they would have never if it wouldn't have. They were that. Bill and Ted's. They had the the uh, will or do you want to play with me? Um, so. Play with me, yeah. But they got their they got their their taste of a push because of that ballot and that's the only reason yep and so is is what it is other other bands on my list i think we touched on some of them. heaven's edge you know that, oh, that yeah. first album was and they, tremendous they actually had quite a few after they, that they, and they're, still do, they're, they're still doing they're still together they're still releasing that, stuff and, and a lot of these bands that had one great album i've never researched it i'm not into the inner workings of the fanboy stuff so a lot of it might be right somebody else wrote the songs and that's why they were good and then they went out to write their own songs and they suck i don't know but i love that first heaven's edge album um, too the, the last two were shy and thunder those were the, the other ones on my list okay now, now that's interesting because i have shy england on mine and there's a distinction right shy and shy england are essentially the same band but it was when they took Shy England, the name, with that misspent youth album. That, to me, is one of the greatest albums ever recorded. Front to back, both sides, no stinkers. I love it. I love his voice. I've listened to the rest that are always entitled just Shy. Not a big fan. It's kind of generic. Right. For me. But that, mis that misspent youth Shy. under the name yeah. Shy, Shy England, England, incredible. 
And who was the other one? They're, I think they're a British band. See, I, I, yeah, that's the yep. Dirty Love yep. band. Okay, I, I think that's the only song I've ever heard. So, and I they're, and they're still, it. they're still together. They're, they still perform. I think they released an album a year or two ago. Um, but yeah, they have more than just obviously than Dirty Love. But, and to me again, I think they should have, they should have been bigger. They have some really good tunes. That's a really good tune. I'm surprised that was a, if you want to call it a one hit wonder, because that's all I ever heard. And I don't know why, there, maybe because there's so many other bands I was listening to, I never ran out to buy a CD or anything, but I love right. that song. I had the cassette single. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I had the cassette single. Yeah. Never checked them out beyond yeah, that. Yeah, they so have, that. well, they do. Oh, there's another popular one called Love Walked In, and then they uh, did a remake of Give Me Some Love. And, um, but yeah, they've got, like I said, some really they have some good tunes beyond those um that were, that were very very popular, popular for, them. for them cool have to check into that all right well, all right, that, well that that concludes, that concludes my, list. my list where are we yeah what are we doing on time um, um does it tell us how long we've been going going, going? <laughs> i don't, I even, don't know. even know there should be yeah, there we're be, at 56 right, minutes, minutes around, around that. that. No, no. no, we have a oh, oh, That's oh, the that. phone call, dude. The, rec the recording. Oh, on oh, oh let's, let's see. 31. 31. We've been, been for 31 been ones. That's, that's about good, then, I, I would think. think. So. For, for, for starters. And we'll we'll see how this goes and we'll tweak. And this will be changing our format and everything else, trying to get things right. We're just old tech guys trying to get in the new tech game. But <clears> if, if you leave if a comment... comment like, is, like, like we like said, we be, said nice. be nice. These are just, These are our, just opinions. our opinions. We're not, we're not getting on people for people for yeah, we're not getting on people, people for, for their, their personal, personal tastes. tastes. Um, yeah, this is just our preference. And again, I can't preface enough. We're not saying Van Halen and Cheap Trick and ACDC or whoever suck. The only I Guns N' Roses <laughs> sucks. I'll, I'll I'll own that and I'll fight anybody on a fucking chat for it. But the bottom line is the rest of them were just saying we don't get it. Not that they're not good, just they're not mega success good. They should have never gotten there. Right, we can't right. understand why they got there. Except Guns N' Roses. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm yeah. good, yeah. All right, all right. Well, well if you've if listened, you've listened we, thank we thank you. And you and we hope you come back, back for, for episode, episode two. two. All right. All See right. you next time.